I watched Kawhi Leonard go into the teeth of their defense, and he was just amongst the land of trees for crying out loud. Plus, they hit perimeter shots, and I was like, oh, Lord. Uh, I, you know, how is anybody going to beat this right now, especially if Golden State doesn't have Kevin Durant, which was why my initial proclamation was that you needed Kevin Durant in order to beat them. But then I watched what Toronto did. I watched Nick Nurse make the adjustment of putting Kawhi on the Greek freak at certain intervals. I watched them double him up at times to get the ball out of his hands. I watched, and most importantly, more importantly than anything else, I watched them focus on Kawhi Leonard, I'm sorry, the Greek freak, from half court to the three-point line when he's coming at you downhill and them try to neutralize him to some degree during that piece, during that period right there. And I saw how catastrophic it's been to Milwaukee's offense because he's not LeBron James like that. He has that capability, and he's, gonna, he's a superstar in the making, and we know that, but LeBron James's ability to create opportunities for others, that's not something that the Greek freak has at his disposal as of yet. And then when you look at the parts around him, Miritich can shoot. Obviously, Ilasova can shoot. We get that. Brooks Lopez can shoot. But they can shoot if you leave them a little bit open. If you get up and press on them, it's considerably more difficult. And so then you take that and then you imagine the speed that you see from the Golden State Warriors defensively in terms of their ability to be on the interior and then the race out to the perimeter to defend opposing perimeter shooters. And I look at their ability to do that plus make shots, plus make free throws, which Milwaukee has struggled with at times with the Greek freak getting to the line. And I just say to myself, you know what? These boys ain't a match for Golden State, man. I, I just I, – I hope I'm wrong because I can't stand a blowout during the NBA Finals, but I, I don't see anybody that can beat them. Even well, I, think you, I think you I think you are wrong and I want to frame it this way. I agree I, I understand what you're saying. There's no one on Milwaukee, let's take Milwaukee for example, like Clay mm -hmm. Thompson or Draymond Green. So even without KD, Steph has a more reliable cast of characters around him. But right. look, Toronto last year won 59 games. The problem in the playoffs were the, was their best player was DeMar DeRozan and that was exposed, right? Then they added Kawhi Leonard. They swapped out DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard. Then they won 58 games. This is a team that won 59 and 58 games in consecutive seasons. And now their best player is Kawhi Leonard, who I believe at this moment, probably the best player in the world. I thought last time he was healthy, he was the second best player in the world behind LeBron James. And by the way, against a, on a badly overmatched San Antonio team where everyone else has passed their prime, Golden State won 73 games and added KD. No one was going to get in their way, right? And, and this is before Houston pushed them at all. And what happened with Kawhi? They were up 23 points at the half. Kawhi got hurt. They got swept. Just like that. Okay? And that was on a depleted San Antonio team. Now, I'm not suggesting they would have won that series, but they might have won a couple games with Kawhi. Now, Kawhi goes to a 58-win team. He's on a 58-win team. Can Giannis and the Bucks lose on the road? Like, is Toronto allowed to win their home games behind, a, you know, winning almost 60 games a season and now with Kawhi as their best player? I don't look too deeply into that and think, oh, my God, there must be something wrong with the Bucks. And let me tell you another reason. Like, styles make fights. Stephen A., you brought this up the other day. Do you know why, really, the Warriors dominated against Portland, who, by the way, was very, very close in three games? And the reason I say Draymond was actually the best player in that series, they dominated on the offensive glass. Draymond was an animal. Here's the thing about the Bucs and Styles making fights. The Bucs dominate on the defensive glass, and they're a lot longer than the Warriors. And my prediction is the battle of possessions on the Warriors' second chances, could be second chances, are going to the Bucs. That is going to be a tight series either way, and I believe the Bucs can win it I if also, they get by Toronto. I also think you're wrong, Stephen A. I think the Warriors should be worried about the Bucs. That doesn't mean I'm picking the Bucs today, but it also means I haven't lost faith in the Bucs. Now, just a quick couple of reminders here. The Milwaukee Bucks were the number one team this season in offensive efficiency. The Milwaukee Bucks were the number one team this season in defensive efficiency. The Milwaukee Bucks had two players, first team All-NBA defensive team with Eric Bledsoe and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And we just watched the Bucks for only the second time this season lose two games in a row. But here's the main reason, Stephen A., that I have not lost faith in the Bucks. Max, you say they have nobody to sort of answer for Klay Thompson. And I think you're right. One through three, although it's close, it tips to the Warriors. But here's where I still have faith in the Bucks. 
four through seven, four through eight. It's the depth that actually is failing them right now when they travel to Toronto. It is guys like Bledsoe, Miritich, Lopez, Hill, Ilyasova. Those guys can play, especially at home. And, Stephen, if their game gets back on and they start knocking down those threes like you talk about, Absolutely, the Warriors and, and, should be worried about the Stephen A. Will mentions number one in offensive and defensive efficiency, and the result is they're number one in the NBA in terms of record. And we know role players in the playoffs typically play better at home. Right. And the Bucks will have home court against the Warriors. Well, let me say this to you. I'm not. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm being. I'm not playing around. I'm being totally serious. I get where both of y'all are coming from. I respect that. I'm just telling you that when when you when you you see stuff unfold in the playoffs. It alerts you to something because it's not just that it, it, they beat Golden State twice in the regular season, if I remember correctly. But guess what? It's a different beast when they bet, you're playing a best of seven and they get to prepare for you. It's a different beast when they have the ability to get out and defend you and you have an, an inability to create your own shot off the dribble. It's one thing to spot up like you do because nobody, I think Milwaukee can contend with anybody doing that. But when they get up in you and they force you, to do dribble drive penetration, to shoot contested shots, to put the ball on the floor. That's a different animal. When you go to the free throw line and you're hitting 60 to 70% of your free throws, but the opposition is hitting 90% of those free throws, those kind of things matter. So all I would say to both of you is this. I get where you're coming from. And who am I? I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I was right with you going into game three. But what I've seen over these last two games has alarmed me and scared me because I like, you know me, Max, I love long series. I like it to come down to a game six, game seven. And what I'm seeing from Milwaukee, I'm imagining Golden State's ability to make shots. But you're sleeping and Milwaukee on Milwaukee is scaring me.